Okay, so just really quickly before we begin, this is a part two to a video I did a few months ago, and so if you want to keep up to date with Ashley's journey, go and watch that and come back here. Okay, cool, thanks, bye. Welcome back to another Ashley only playthrough. Last time we narrowly escaped the village, survived a treacherous ski lift, and ended up staring down the big cheese with no backup. But what if this time the merchant had something for Ashley? A small weapon she could use in case of emergencies. With this change, I'm still trying to stay true to her character, so it'll go like this. Ashley can use a small pistol only during boss fights when Lewis can't help, or on very rare occasions when there's no other options. This is the only weapon she can use, and the red laser sight has been removed to decrease accuracy. Plus, she can't upgrade it either. You might notice a slight issue with her hand while holding the gun but the good thing is she won't be using it that often anyway. Now with a pistol, defeating Father Mendes is doable but certainly not easy. Since Ashley's health is extremely limited, there are certain attacks he can do that will kill her instantly. Shooting the explosive barrel is the only way to do some real damage, but most of the time I'm left trying to hit a very narrow weak spot with a very weak pistol. After managing to get to phase 2, Mendes can now lift himself into the rafters and swing around the barn like Spider-Man. At this point, I can still only get a couple of shots in before needing to move, and with most of those shots missing, I'm surprised the barn hadn't already collapsed yet. With enough dodging and lucky shots, Ashley finally takes this abomination out. And also his eye. Exiting the barn, we see that Lewis was actually trying his hardest to get in, but just couldn't work it out. So this is what he gets. You shot me. Thankfully, our return to the ski lifts this time was pretty uneventful. Use this. Now with the false eye, we can finally get out of the village. But with what lies ahead, I'd say this is more like out of the frying pan and into the fire. Up next is the castle, where Ashley and Lewis sprint across another bridge to escape a horde of villagers, but this time they can't follow us through. Once inside, we reach the merchant, who can now sell us a medium sized case, and since there's not much else to spend my money on, I'll take it. Moving on, we reach the castle walls, a big action set piece where you're encouraged to use the sniper to shoot the villagers who are launching flaming boulders at you. Instead, we have Lewis, who as we know can basically take out any target from any range. The main issue though is that his pistol is getting pretty weak the more we progress through the game, and it can result in me waiting literal minutes for him to kill one guy, or you know I'll just have to leave because more show up. Then I come back later when he finally gets one. At least he's pretty efficient at taking out the villagers at the catapults, and I can stay back at a safe distance while he gets to work. Ashley can then use the crank to blow open the gate and progress further into the castle. Next up we find ourselves in the sword room, guarded by a new enemy type that Lewis hasn't seen before, and the results are interesting. For some reason, these guys have absolutely no intention of capturing Ashley, and instead gang up on Lewis, he has to deal with like 6 of them at once. And with me being Ashley, all I can really do is just stand and watch Lewis get bullied for 20 minutes. I mean, I tried distracting them with my, uh, ballistics, but again, they just don't care. It was at this point I realised I could just replace the swords in peace and swiftly move on. After that incident, Lewis once again gets pretty fed up of protecting me, and after begging him to stay, he simply walks off to find his own way out of here. God damn it. This means I'm back to running away from any enemies I encounter, which makes trying to get the key for the next gate a bit more complicated. After grabbing the key, I quickly get sworn by five villagers with a cheeky red barrel taunting me in the background. This is where the herbs I've saved up until now really bailed me out, because after getting past this first wave in the room, there's now a huge guy with a minigun holding down my only exit back to the gate. With no choice but to run through, I ended up taking two shots because I actually forgot where the exit was costing me all of my heals. Getting through the castle gate, Ashley runs into Salazar. Probably amazed by how far she's got, he decides not to capture her and instead wants to see how she deals with all the mischievous traps lying ahead. But before all that, there's a handy typewriter straight ahead. Now within the heart of the castle, Ashley finds herself in an ominous hallway overlooking a small prison with only one cell. Unfortunately, the other end of the hall is blocked off by fire-breathing statues, and of course the switch 
to shut them off is in the one prison cell. Whoever designed this place was clearly having a laugh. At least the key into the prison was easy to find, but after opening the door I'm immediately greeted by a cultist. For some reason the zombie wolverine guy doesn't appear in the prison cell, but it doesn't really change much since after activating the switch, I'm left trapped in the prison with the cultist who needs to be killed in order to open the door. This obviously turned into a bit of a problem. Being stuck in the prison with him gave me literally zero options to even hurt him. So my best chance would be to lure him out of the room without hitting the switch and trying to experiment with a larger environment. My first idea was to bring him over to the fire breathing statues, which seemed like a no brainer and with his lunge attack I could quickly move out of the way and get him to swing into the fire. After a few attempts I found out it was actually pretty hard and whether he would even catch fire if he collided with it was still up in the air. Out of frustration I tried seeing what would happen if I used the switch while the cultist was outside the prison. The door would still close and I would end up soft locked. On my next attempt I tried leading him out of the door I came in through. It was then I remember the double tapping X which forcefully pushes the door open might have a chance to at least stun him. Not only would it knock him to the ground but there was clear blood splatters on every hit. So if there's a chance he's taken damage from these door smacks then in theory he should eventually die right? Well even getting to hit him was still a bit tricky since I would need him to be close enough to the door and quickly push it before he swings right through it. Most of the time I could only get one or two hits in before he makes it through and I would have to dodge another attack before I can restart on the other side. After roughly two minutes though he eventually takes one too many concussions and dies on the spot. Using the switch this time doesn't shut the prison door, but that means now more enemies spawn in before I can leave, including the wolverine dude who was missing earlier. Despite his quick movements I simply run around him, but the exit was blocked by a few cultists who weren't afraid to kill each other if it meant hurting me. <laughs> With no health or heals I stepped into the next room. Yeah, this is bad. Even while I managed to slip past and find a green herb, I reached the room where two people are required to stand on these floor switches to progress. I even managed to get an enemy to stand on one, but of course it doesn't work. My only choice left was to call in an old friend. Lewis is back yet again to help me through this simple puzzle, but before we can get to the room, he insists on killing every single person he sees. With these guys being the same ones that only target him, he was quickly swarmed and left almost stun locked by their constant attacks. Again, I was standing here completely useless and trying to intervene only got me killed. I ended up just standing in a corner and waiting about 15 minutes for him to slowly kill them all. Even while dying, Lewis is still compelled to toss Ashley some handgun ammo. Eventually he started following me again and soon after he picked off the last couple enemies. Reaching the puzzle room, I was happy to learn that Lewis could indeed activate the floor switch. The only problem was I could and command him to stay on it. I tried getting him to stand at the furthest point possible to buy myself more time, but he was already on my ass whenever I turned around. The solution I finally came up with was a bit unconventional. To do this, Ashley needed to pull out the pistol, not to shoot anything but to aim it at Lewis, which forced him to kneel down and stay still as long as I was pointing the gun at him. This is where the tank controls made this even harder than it should have been, because turning and getting myself into position meant I wasn't aiming the gun anymore and he would sprint back over to me. It took a few attempts but in the end I got it to work. Using the crank brings us up to another open area with more cranks to use that will create a bridge to reach the other side. Look there's a crank over there. It seemed that Lewis was getting a bit too excited to climb up there, but Ashley does have the option to give him a piggyback. Once up, he immediately shoots every single cultist, but uh, unfortunately starts to get a little confused. With no one left to kill, he gets bored out of his mind and starts spinning endlessly. Maybe it would be better if Lewis gave me a boost instead. With both platforms raised, we can hop across the water and reach the hallway with random upside down statues. Luckily, we find the merchant again and I can sell a ton of unused ammo for more healing items. Unfortunately though it won't come in useful as this time it seems that I get sick of hanging around Lewis and after trying to get away 
end up in the most obvious trap ever made. It seems that without Lewis's help, the run is pretty much over, but whether he decides to help me or not is still a mystery. So yeah, if you guys have made it to the end with me, then please let me know if you have any thoughts or ideas on what to do with this series. Do you think it can still continue, or is Ashley's journey finally on an end? But anyway, with that being said, thanks for watching. Bye guys.